Mike Cunha is on the Toyota of Hollywood Hotline. He hosts Dolphins Weekly Live on CBS4. He's the sideline reporter on CBS4 during Dolphins preseason games. He did a fantastic job Friday night. I told you I watched the entire Dolphins-Falcons game. He did a fantastic job. It got a little chippy between him and Goldie during mm. the broadcast. It was a little contentious. What was going on there, Mike? As it, yeah, behind the scenes, you know, Goldie and I really hate each other. That's There's bad it blood. You know, it's pretty just, obvious. It's, it's boiling all, over it's onto all, the air. All front. Oh, it's going to be worse because I have to drive him to Tampa next week. Uh, so I'm, <laughs> you have to spend like four hours with him and Bo Camper in my car. So the three of you, be, the three of you will all drive yeah. together to Tampa? No, no. The three of us, yeah, I'll be driving uh, and they'll be there, you know, bothering me as they usually are. Who sits in the front seat? Uh, who sits in the front seat? Who get who gets shotgun? I'm guessing Bo. Uh, I've thought about this a lot. <laughs> I don't know why, but I have thought about this a lot because because uh, I think Goldie was the first to have dibs in the car, and then Bo hopped on. So I'm not sure. I'm gonna guess Bo. I'm gonna yeah, guess because he just we'll it doesn't front. matter who's got dibs, who's got senor. It just Bo sits where he wants to sit. Yeah. In fact, if he just wants to drive your car. You would have to let him, no? Right. Well, yeah, that's the thing. Bo didn't exactly ask to come with me. He just said, "Mike, I'm coming. In, I'm coming with you up to Tampa." And I was like, "Okay, you're, you're coming with me to Tampa. That's right. That's fine." You know, I so, I know how like, how neurotic yes, know. Cuno is, but I know how neurotic he is about things because I happen to be that way about people in my car for a long period of time that are not family members. I get I get the spilkus over this. And if I knew that I had in two weeks a road trip to Tampa with Goldie and Kim Bo Camper, I wouldn't be able to concentrate on my work for two weeks. That's how neurotic I am about that <laughs> stuff. And I have a feeling that Mike's got some of those neuroses. I I, I do. I'm like already like planning on when I'm going to clean my car just so everything <laughs> is in order because they will pick apart everything just because that's <laughs> that's what they do to me, you know. Yeah. And Mike, Mike, are you allowed to lay down the rules? Like nothing without a top, close your bottle afterwards, don't leave trash, take your, like, can, it's your, Mike, it's your car. You let them know right. what you want them to do. That's what I'm hyping myself up. I like look at myself in the mirror in the morning. I'm like, tell them it's your car, Cuno, it's your car. That's um, that's that's how I go about it, you know. But like, I don't like to drive fast, and I know that if Kim Bo Camper was sitting next to me and I was driving him, I would feel compelled to probably drive faster than I normally drive. And then if I got pulled over because it was Kim Bo Camper, I probably would feel compelled to punch the cop in the face to impress Bo. <laughs> like, and there would just be so many things going through my head. Yeah, yeah. I've I thought about like if I get a flat tire, who's actually going to help me? And I just know it'll be neither of them. They'll just stand there and and like ridicule me the entire time while I'm doing it wrong. Turn it left. <laughs> Turn it left. You're not going to pick up the truck. I don't know how to change a tire. You know how to change a tire, Cuno? I do. I do. I've done it plenty of times. Really? Huh. You That's know how to change yeah. a tire, Solana? Yeah, I call AAA. Yeah, that's how I do it too. You can do that. I, you, yeah, you I yell out that, yeah. lug nuts. I that's all I know. I yell, I yell like I kind of talk to myself if there's someone ah lug nuts. And then I call Do you even know what the jack is? Do you even know where no. the jack is in your car? Yeah, I know where it is. It's somewhere in the you car. Know, honestly, though, like for safety reasons, you probably shouldn't. You you in 2024? I mean, what, what am I driving down a, a, a back country road to go uh fishing in the creek? Uh, no, I don't need that car like falling in your foot while you're trying to I'm not trying to do anything. I don't, I don't I don't think you know me well enough. I'm not trying to do the only <laughs> injury that I could get changing a tire would literally be dropping the phone on my foot while I'm calling AAA. <laughs> God, <that's laughs> Call AAA in an ambulance. <laughs> hey, hey, deal, Mike. I've told that story before. Coon, you'll, you'll get a kick out of this. I had just gotten married to Lori, and I don't know if she realized or not that I was nowhere near a real man. She's probably getting the idea when she was the one that would have to grill if we were going to grill something. And I was thrilled to pull the laundry. But I think she was really she was starting to get the idea. And then I wake up one morning. We had a little apartment in Delray Beach and the cars were parked outside in front of the apartment. 
I walk outside and I have a flat tire. I had an Isuzu Rodeo, I think. And I had a flat tire, like it was flat, flat. And so, but it's in my parking spot. It's in my, like, I could easily change it myself if I knew how, but I didn't know how. So I called AAA. And then when the AAA guy came over, I held my back as I walked out front. And I was like, oh, oh man, I'm so God. sorry to do this to you, but I just had back surgery or else I would change it myself. Cause I was, you know, cause what young guy is going to call AAA, you know, it, and it's like, it's not even on the side of a road, you know what I mean? It was just, you know, you know, residential parking space. So I walked out, I pretended I had just had back surgery. And what did your wife say to that? To watching you pretend like you had back surgery? Well, she'd heard that a lot during sex when I couldn't perform. I would yell out, <laughs> okay. I just had black back surgery. And I don't know. Things went from that. <laughs> if you were performing in sex, you didn't have black surgery. <laughs> I told her I was going to get black surgery. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad you said something, Crowder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have this corrected momentarily. I'm getting black surgery. <laughs> Play this segment for uh, Goldie and Kimbo Camper in the car when you guys are driving. You guys. Camp. You guys should you guys should call. You guys should call me when we're going up just to see how it's going. That, like, that's a do, great idea. Do, like all every once an hour just to see if we've killed each other yet. That's a great idea. Do you think you will stop somewhere and have lunch with them, but then you have to maintain that wacky diet that you're on? Oh yeah, no. See, that's in all honesty, that is the one thing I've been thinking about. Is like I'm going to be the biggest pain if we do have to stop somewhere. My plan is to not stop. I don't like to stop if I don't have to. But if we do stop, they're going to hate the fact that I'm not just going to pull into like a Burger King and grab something. Um, we're going to, you know, we're going to pull into like a Whole Foods or a fresh market and, you know, get something fresh. Oh, I, w I, w I want to see Please. you and Bo Camper and Goldie get out of your car and like reservoir dog style walk into Whole Foods. <laughs> <laughs> if you, we can't be on the air when that happens because Bo's about to cuss if he sees a Whole Foods on yeah. the road. Yeah, yeah, he's not down with that. Wow, you got the dump button ready. What do you offer me? You on good radio or not? <laughs> hey, let's grab uh, something to eat. I guess I oh, should ask food. you some Dolphins questions as long as... Do you think we'll see uh, the starters on Saturday? Tua said today that he wants to play Saturday. Is that a harbinger yeah. that they will? You know, I just go back to what they've what they've always done with with the second preseason game and that's the that's the one where they seem to play the starters the most. I mean even the third preseason game last year, I think the starters played like a series. I think it would, they work they kind of work up to everyone playing that second game cuz then you get about you know two three weeks off so if guys can rest up injuries. I'd imagine we're going to see the starters for how long? I'm not sure, maybe you get a half or something, maybe a quarter, but but I just go. I have to go back and look what they did last year um, in that second game. But I'd imagine the starters are playing. Now Mike, did what? Did you learn anything first game? My question is about the defense. We talked about it before leading yeah. into the game of what kind of defense Anthony Weaver is going to run. And I watched. I watched the first three series. I think very simple. We knew what was going to happen. But did you learn anything? Did you answer any questions versus the Falcons? Defensively, or or just anywhere? Because just, if it's if it's Anywhere, it's that I think they have their left tackle of the future in Patrick Paul. Because I was watching him um, for a couple series. and I mean, he played most of the game, and he didn't come out. But the, but every time, and I mentioned on the broadcast, every time he came over to the sideline after a series, it's Armstead, it's Lamb, it's, it's uh, Austin Jackson. Everyone is in his ears letting him know, hey, do this better, do this, this. Um, so I was really interested in that. And then again, talking to Jalen right after the game, too. He, he, you know, he spoke so well and glowingly of, of Patrick Paul just running to that left side and, and like that kind of being maybe a potential tandem we see down the road years to come. I really like that kid. I think, I think there's, they have something there with him, but the best part is it, it's like, unless, you know, there's a number of injuries, it's not like they have to rush him into duty yet. Yeah, they can kind of develop him. And I think that's really cool.
What do you think? And I hesitate to bring this up, but Mm -hmm. Dave Hyde wrote about it. Crowder gave us a hypothetical on the show yesterday. What do you think? There are Dolphins fans who I believe are a little bit panicked by the camp and first preseason game with Skylar Thompson and Mike White. And there's a burbling conversation about Ryan Tannehill being a free agent and Mm -hmm. him coming in as to his backup. Crowder endorses it. Love it. He believes out of those three quarterbacks, Tannehill is head and shoulders the best one. And taking it a step further, he gave us a hypothetical yesterday about, hey, it's week 18. It's your final game. You need to win to get into the playoffs. And Tua's unavailable, unfortunately. Which of those three quarterbacks gives you the best chance? Crowder says Ryan Tannehill does. Your thoughts on this uh, very delicate topic? Crowder, like Dolphin fans everywhere, have been hurt one too many times. Um, <laughs> this is I'm not, it's not the answer, I, I don't think. Um, look, is, is Tannehill maybe talent-wise overall better than those two? Maybe. I don't know about at this point in his career. But the problem with Tannehill coming here and thinking you're just going to insert them all of a sudden off the street, like that that's a long shot in of itself just because how complicated this offense is. When you talk about Skyler Thompson, Mike White, they've been in this offense basically their entire careers. Mike White getting back to his LaFleur days when he was with the Jets. Like this is an offense that's not easy to learn. It's not easy to to just pick up and run in there and just say, hey, throw anybody in there and do it. Um, if, if it were up to me, give me the guys that have been in the offense. Now, had Tannehill been in this offense at some point in his career, uh, and I don't believe he has with Tennessee, then then maybe. But but no, I, I would I would stick with the guys who have been here and kind of lived it already, and kind of know what they're what they're seeing, what they're saying out there. That offense is so complicated at times that I just think it's better to be in it to have a guy who's been in it for a long time for long term. Excuse me. Hey, Cuno, after watching Jalen yeah. Wright, I'm sure it was impressive to see him live the other day on the sideline. Is it an overreaction, maybe a silly overreaction on my part to say, as good as Tyreek and Waddle are, the best Dolphins position group is the running backs with how stacked that running back room is? The deepest. Yeah, no, that's, that's about as deep as a running back group you'll find in the NFL. It's probably the deepest uh, when you look at it. Because think about it this way, like years ago, and this isn't to take anything away from you know, Miles Gaskin, Savon Oxman, but years ago, those, that was your one, two punch, right? Now, now you've got Savon, he, he's in the mix there, but that's, it's not like those two guys are the one, two punch. You've got Raheem, you've got Achan, you've got Jalen Wright, you've got Jeff Wilson, who, who played big snaps last year in, in that, um, in that game against the Cowboys. He basically helped them win that game at the end on that last drive to get that field goal. Um, yeah, this is about as deep as it gets. The wide receiver room is loaded with veterans as well. Um, but top to bottom, like talent wise, I think that that running back room, I think can hang with anyone else who's in the league. Mike Cunio, you see him on CBS four and CBS HQ, uh, on, on this, uh, on this, uh, final question, your thoughts on fast times at Ridgemont high. Don't get this wrong. Mm. Um, so I think I, I just, I, I miss on the movie and not, not anything that's bad. I've seen it a million times, but. I grew up when, whenever I'd see it, it was always like on FX or I like, I don't know, Comedy Central or something. So it was always like the watered down version of oh, it. Oh, yeah. So um, you haven't really seen it then. You know what I mean? Right, right. And I, and I get it. I, I understand, Hawk, you know, uh, your immaturities are just well documented. So no, I mean, I was 12 I when it like came it. out. Go <laughs> ahead. What was your, what was your go to movie when you were 12? Had. Go ahead. Oh, you had, Hawk. That is all I had. You're damn right. And I'm damn proud of it. It's better than Step Brothers and all the crap you had. What? Okay. First of all, Step Brothers, top two movie of all time. It's like oh my The God. Godfather I, and, I mean, uh, and Step Brothers. And I've never even seen The Godfather. So, um, <laughs> but. <laughs> no, you but really like, like I think, I think Brothers? okay, hot. I love Step Brothers. I think it's a great movie. Oh. But I think I think every generation kind of has that kind of movie, right? Like you had Fast oh. Times to Rich Von Heim. I think I think what like Solana or in our generation would have been what like uh, American Pie. American sure. Pie, right? Yeah. yeah. And and Mike, like that that one movie when your parents go to bed a little early, you're up Saturday night, you can sneak and watch it. Maybe you know Mike loving Mike. Which movie was that for you? 
Never say the words Mike loving Mike ever again. I mean, in any sort of professional arena, okay? He's a newsman, Crowder. He's, he's a newsman. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, I, you know, I swear, I it happens everywhere I go. It happened this weekend at a one year old birthday party. Like, oh, you're Cuno, right? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, you know, probably see your computer. No, no, no. You're the guy on the radio station. They always give the hard time to. I'm like, I hate what my life has become. <laughs> Did you ever have to throw away an apple pie at your house before anyone had it? <laughs> All right, we'll be back with more Hawkman and Crowder after this. <laughs>